Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like, and we hope you enjoy the broadcast. Welcome to the Channel for Grace. Jago Bend will be live shortly. Book a tarot or astrology reading on our website, channelforgrace.guru, and check out our latest programs and classes. Please give us a share and a like. All right, there we go. Welcome in, everybody. <laughs> We're having one of these days, I guess. <laughs> All right, what's going on, everybody? My name is Jago Bend, and this is your channel for grace. Thank you guys so much for being here live, and thank you guys for watching the replay. We are going to talk about the human design transit chart of this full moon in Aquarius <laughs> that is happening tomorrow. And we're going to talk about the, <laughs> the 19th <laughs> gate, which is where this full moon is found, what that means for us, what it actually, the, what's the energy of this gate? Where is it found in the chart? And what could be the possible connection if you have the 49 with the channel of synthesis? <laughs> <laughs> but before we dive into that, welcome to our second day out of time and the cube. <laughs> so if you didn't know, we are in the days out of time right now. The new Atlantean year begins on August 4th, as well as the Lion Lionsgate energy has already been activated. But today is specifically resembling the cube, which is the earth element as well as all the earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And it's a reminder for us to ground ourselves. But the earth, according to the ancient Atlanteans, or the cube, is literally like the path of the earth. The cube, within the cube is also the uh, Merkaba. And there's a lot of cool sacred geometry stuff that we can dive into, but we definitely do that in the Moon Goddess training. Um, anyways... This is exciting energy, and the reason I was explaining this, I did an Instagram video earlier today where I did a little ritual celebration, pulled some cards, so go check that video out. I'm going to be going live every day on Instagram, so go check those videos out and come join me live. Usually afternoons is the, in Pacific time, is the time that works best for me, but I just do it whenever I feel like it. <laughs> so... Um, this is cool, you guys. We are in this sort of 
time out of time and we're celebrating you know we're celebrating the sacred geometry we're celebrating the elements we're celebrating everything that brings our world together during this time so there we go exciting times and this full moon is going to be happening during the days out of time so that's going to be pretty powerful too um i also want to uh ask you to please give this video a thumbs up also, leave a comment below if you're watching the replay. Let me know that you watched it and what you thought about it. Also, um, let me know uh, or check out the links below because we have some really awesome stuff coming up. I keep forgetting to make announcements. This is horrible. So I'm all over the place, okay? This is just how it is <laughs> today. But we have some pretty cool stuff coming up. And one of them is we have our nodes workshop. I'm going to be doing a special workshop. It's included if you're in the Starseed membership. So I recommend joining the Starseed membership. There is so much more than these workshops, but these workshops are pretty freaking epic and, they, and you get them included in the membership. The membership is only $22 a month. And those of you guys that are in it, like what's your favorite part about the membership? Why don't you, if you could share in the chat, that would be awesome. Uh, also, uh, we are going to be, so in that nodes workshop, which is happening August 3rd, so Thursday, I think 5 p.m. Pacific, um, five, eight, uh, yeah, 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to talk about what does it mean, North Node Aries, South Node Libra, what are what is the significance astrologically, where is this in your chart, how to interpret it, all that good stuff. It's an 18-month-long transit, so you better get ready for what's coming because for 18 months, there's an area of your life that you're going to have to be letting go and releasing and not getting attached in relationships and there's an area of your life where you need to be freaking courageous and just like take that leap of faith do you know where that is in your chart we're gonna go over that if you want to purchase a workshop just by itself you can also do that and it's 25 dollars. and um oh it's right there it's in the description see i'm smart i do these things early on i'm like <laughs> did i put the link <laughs> i don't know the link is there if you want to purchase the workshop by itself but i obviously recommend you join the membership where you're going to get all of the workshops we just did the venus one the replay is up so i just decided to do two options for everyone because i know some people just want to buy like the one thing so anyways that's one thing that's going on okay and that's happening this thursday so come check it out number two Announcement number two. <laughs> Did you hear about Jason and I's Lion Gate freaking masterclass? We have created this epic ebook. I looking at it, I just like I love it. I, I'm gonna print it out for myself and like have it there always to remind me like how to stay in that manifesting epic energy. That's what we're going to talk about. The Lion's Gate is a powerful time of manifestation. It's connected to the summer season. It's connected to Leo season in astrology. All of this is about the, the heart's desire, tapping into your heart's desire. It's obviously the Lion's Gate, and that has connections to ancient Atlantis and ancient Mayan, the Mayan calendar. But in ancient Atlantis is where you have the connection to the initiatic path of all of the hermetic alchemy students that basically ushered you into this path of the high priestess and or the high priest or the magician or however you want to call it and it activated us in a really powerful way and the wisdom of ancient atlantis is like it permeates to freaking everything we're also going to talk about the laws of the universe what they are why you need to know the laws of the universe how does that help you with manifesting it's like the freaking key like it's like the key like hey here's the here's how the universe works now that you have the key you can manipulate it in a positive way of course so that's actually um really exciting thing that is also happening and we have a book club going on right now we're reading the book uh jaguar in the body butterfly in the heart it is epic it's a book about shamanism the book club is free all you got to do is be a part of the global community. Link is below. The other free thing that we're offering sponsored by the Moon Goddess Cohort, which if you're not in it, you should join the Moon Goddess Cohort. It's only available for those of you that have graduated from either level one, two, or three of the Moon Goddess training in, in, in uh, last year or this year. 
it's open to you guys for for signing up and it's available so go check that out we're going to be sponsoring events and things like that and so the first one that we're sponsoring is a 11 day healing meditation for the venus retrograde and our healing meditation is going to begin on the eighth on the lion's gate it's this beautiful meditation to open up the throat. A lot of the gates that Venus is transiting through right now during her retrograde and the sun are in the throat, which is the center of manifestation in human design. So that meditation is focused on healing. And we know that the Venus retrograde, like go check out the workshop, but the Venus retrograde is about healing through relationships during this time. So that's really exciting. We have an orientation on the 7th and all you have to do is just be a part of the global community. Just like create your free account and it's and it's all right there. And when you go to all events in the on the menu tab, you will see all of the events there and they're going to be held on Zoom. And the day you can like RSVP, you can add them to your calendar. I mean, this this program is like amazing. So that's the other cool thing that is uh going on did i miss anything oh my god there's so much but anyways that's what's up so come check it out so many fun things there's a there's like activation energy i feel it for sure ah welcome in melanie thank you for being here uh dawn welcome in maricela maria raven venus hello sunny hello satnam how are you guys doing? How are you guys like feeling right now with this crazy energy? Jill is here as well. Yeah, so much astrology and <laughs> freaking knowledge. Yeah, those Zoom meetings are the best. We have such a beautiful community. It's really, it's, I've never seen anything like this. So come check it out. You're not going to regret it. Like this group keeps building and it just keeps getting more powerful and more beautiful. And it's literally blowing my mind. Um, okay. Let us share the screen. So now we're going to dive into this full moon in Aquarius. You know, uh, Sunny says, I have not slept all week. Dude, I've had a hard time sleeping. Like too much like, bzz, like buzzing. I've been like working out at like 8 p.m. Like I'm working out at like 9 p.m. Last night I was like sweating balls on the treadmill, but I loved it. But I was like, how am I even doing this right now? Like, where am I getting all this energy from? <laughs> right. But, you know, we do have that sacral defined. So take advantage of it if you're a projector or a reflector or a manifester, because the energy is available to us right now. Courtesy of Pluto. <laughs> Oh, this is too funny. So where is this full moon happening in the chart? So we're going to be looking at the root center and the 19th gate, which is called the gate of need. To give you a little bit of a background information, the root center has to do with, it's about being grounded, but it's more than being grounded. It's about dealing with stress right? Like life comes with stressful things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you either have a consistent way of dealing with stress, the ability to actually deal with stress successfully, or you don't, right? You're either here to be someone who like handles stress, or you're either here to be someone who is not meant to handle stress and your life is not meant to be stressful. And you're not meant to like, um, you know, you know, to feel that pressure, you're meant to just like flow through life in a very kind of relaxed way. And so if you have the root center defined, that's when you have that consistent sense of pressure. Right now, we actually have both of these defined and they're actually being defined by the North Node and Pluto. These energies are squaring and they're like, hello. <laughs> I bet you that some people that are new to this are like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Anyways, Pluto is basically making a T-square, right? To the nodes. And it activates this channel of mutation for us, which defines the sacral and the root. And we can be feeling this very strongly right now. I know I am. I feel like I'm crazy right now. 
Yeah, I need to find root center friend. Yeah, Don has a defined root, my husband. Thank God. It's so funny. It's like when he's not here, I'm like trying to rush, 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 rush. I got to do this, got to do that, got to do, gotta get it done, get it done, get it done. And I am a fucking workaholic. That's like so not, that's like me in my not self out of control. But I can't stop it because <laughs> I love doing things. And then I burn myself out, which is not good. That's That's the shadow of me. I burn myself out because I'm like, go, go, go all the time, even though I don't have a defined sacral or a defined root. But when Don comes home, it's like, I literally just like melt. And I'm like, oh my God, what happened to the universe? And all I want to do is sleep. <laughs> He's like the Sandman. <laughs> I think maybe that's why I go crazy workaholic mode when he's not here. Um, yes. So, but out of this root comes out this 19th gate. And this 19th gate is called the gate of need. It's actually part of the tribal, it's tribal circuitry. And tribal circuitry is like, yeah, to the max. Like he grounds me, but like over, like he overdoes it. I'm like, I got shit to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> so basically we have this tribal circuitry, which has to do with community taking care of each other, which I actually love, but it is part of, it's the ego circuit. And the tribal ego circuit is, it's about foundation. It's the mundane, mundane plane. It's also the material world. It's not about direction. Um, it's not a mental energy. It's maintaining the well-being and growth of the community. It's focused around the ego or like the ego center or like our tribal heart right? Isn't that fucking beautiful? Our tribal heart. Oh my God. It's about trying to find balance between work and rest. Okay. That's good. I like that. <laughs> it's, it's like the energy of being really happy when we're like working together in groups. Um, it's the need to place material value on ourselves, um, and on whatever we have to offer the world. It's the need for community and family it's concerned with having enough food, money, or affection. Touch and smell um, is basically the way that that we we learn to trust <laughs> each other when we're in this like close tribal group knit community. And the nineteenth gate is forms part a piece of this circuit, and it's called the gate of need. So what is this gate all about? The quick reference theme of the 19th gate is people whose material and emotional needs require successful interactions with others. Meaning there's no way around this. We have to learn to work together. That's what this Aquarius full moon is telling us. Through this gate, there is a continual pressure on others to bring awareness to the needs of the immediate environment or group. Through the pressure of the design, these people always endure the basic ensure that basic needs are met in particular food shelter and sex <laughs> people with the 19 always needs people with the 19th always need to have a full refrigerator or place to call home and people to communicate with all of this is like community oriented community focused the role of these people is to flirt with others in order to see if their needs are met if the other person's uh principles agree with their needs they can potentially make a bargain together. Without a clear deal, um, the 19 knows what it needs, but it doesn't know how to get it. So because this is not a full channel that is defined, that's how maybe a lot of us might feel. For example, I don't have this channel defined. I don't have the 49, which is the one on the other side. So for me, I might feel like, oh, I know what I, mean, I, what I need, but I'm not really sure how to get it, or I, I don't know how to get it, right? So that's kind of the frequency of this energy. This gate also brings a need and a potential gift for touch, as well as a potential gift for connecting with animals and nature. So that's actually really cool. The gate that this connects to is called the 49. So anyone in the chat, does anyone have the 49? If you're here watching in the chat or if you're watching the replay, do you have the 49? If you do, this is the energy of the 49 people whose principles 
may either cause them to reject or be rejected. This is the gate where the principles of any relationship are established. The 49 has a need to be obeyed. If the principles of the 49 are not accepted, they will reject the other person. Hence, this is the gate of divorce and revolution. These can be very sensitive or very insensitive people. Their, the quest, their question is always, who will stand by me and support my principles? Because their principles are governed by the ups and downs of the emotional wave, because it's in the solar plexus, these people have to stay in constant communication with their loved ones in order to maintain clarity in their relationships. They need the material resources of the 19 because they cannot necessarily maintain their principles. This gate carries a potential sensitivity or insensitivity to animals. <laughs> it is the gate of the breeder or the butcher. I'm sorry. Okay, but what does this channel represent? So if you have the 49 and you don't have the 19, this moon will make you feel like this channel is connected and you will feel like you have a defined um, solar plexus if you don't have one and the defined root. The channel of synthesis is actually a design of, uh, uh, a design of sensitivity. Isn't that cool? This, this, I do feel a lot more sensitive than normal. Your life is a constant lesson in sensitivity to balance your own needs with those around you while holding fast to your own principles. Your potential gift is to be recognized as someone who can always balance practicality and fairness. This is also a mystical channel. Okay, Kingdom Unity has the 49. The channel of animism, the harvest and the slaughter, the channel of communal ritual, a design of psychic potential through sensitivity. Ooh, this is powerful stuff, you guys. It's also the sexuality keynote of the channel of the bride and the groom. The whole channel. It is in this channel that the correct strategy is laid down for entering into any kind of bond or contract with another person. These people are here to learn, to be sensitive and to balance their own needs with the needs of others. They will put a lot of effort into a bond and they can be acutely sensitive or insensitive depending on the emotional wave. This is an emotional projected channel, which means that ideally these people have to be recognized by others before entering into their relationships. They must allow time and space for a natural courtship to develop so they can be emotionally clear before making any commitment. As the root of the stream of touch, people with this channel demand close contact with others. Depending on whether the emotional wave is up or down, they can want a hug or want to hit. <laughs> oh, poor Raven. I'm just kidding. This channel is rooted in food, environment, and community. Such people need to eat together with others regularly. Food is of great importance to them. So let me look at this chat. Maria says, I have the 19th gate and it's your moon. Um, well, then this full moon is on your full moon, <laughs> on your moon, which is actually really cool. It's just enhanced energy. Uh, Jill has the 49. Do you have the 19? I didn't catch that. Um, so, but you're, if you have the 49, you're going to feel this channel defined. Um, Rebecca, I have an incomplete 19... Okay, so you have a hanging gate. You have the 19th as a hanging gate in your personality side that it's not connected to the 49. Okay, and it's your Jupiter. Okay, so you have big energy like that. You have the gate of need, very strong. Um, okay, so Jill, you do have the whole channel. Okay, so this is just going to highlight that energy in your chart and make you feel more like it's more important at this time. Community. Oh, I love that word, attunement. Oh, damn, this is exactly my mom. <laughs> I knew you, I knew. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> I can't even. So, I mean, this is actually cool. Like, this energy is cool. I feel like, you know, this Aquarius moon is very, Aquarius full moon is going to be very activating already because it's Aquarius. It's like nervous system energy, you know? It's like Kundalini, Kundalini rising. It's Uranus energy. It's ruled by Uranus and the activation. It can be very unpredictable, the things that show up with Uranus energy, but they can also be like very exciting and they, and they can really change things up and they can like make you feel like, you know, everything is like suddenly something else and you don't really have a choice but to just go with the new you know go with the new in the gene keys we were reading about yesterday 
talked about the future human being, how basically like something about the future human being, and I'm making this connection right now myself, is obviously has to do with community, with the tribe, with being like tribal and, and connecting to others. I actually feel this energy uh, uh, also, Jill. I feel like I am um, feeling so grateful for the community that, that I do have you know, and that's like in the global community and like what's the relationships that are building because of it, you know. So this is the energy that we're going to be experiencing right now. It's it's about getting our needs met. You need to get your needs met. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what this full moon is saying. Like what do you need? And do you have and like are you meeting your needs? Like vital energy needs, you know? Maybe, maybe you need love. Maybe you need touch. Maybe you need a hug, <laughs> you know? Like you got to you got to meet your needs and you got to meet the needs of others as well. Not like you're responsible for other people's needs, but we may feel like, hey, how about everybody? We get all our needs met right now. How about we all work together to to do this together? And that's what that's why that Aquarius energy is so community oriented. It's like friendships, networks, groups. So communities. So the tribe, we are we are learning to work to be together. And that's what this moon is really teaching us. And that makes so much sense too because of the retrograde that's happening right now and the healing that we're doing within our relationships, the letting go of all the toxic, all the things that do no longer work in our relationships and then opening ourselves up to new possibilities of love. But it really comes from knowing your heart. And obviously on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the sun, which is in Leo. And that's the heart. You have Venus which is in Leo. And that's the heart. Venus is our what we truly desire. The sun is our soul. It's like during this time, we need to tap into like, what do we truly desire? And how do we bring that into, into the world? And that's why I think this energy is uh, like forcing us to think about the future. Like, don't forget about the future. Like that's what the tribal circuitry is all about like the reason we take care of each other is because we care about the kids and we care about like what's coming next and we care about the future generations that's why the tribal energy is here in the chart like people that have a lot of tribal energy are like very like community oriented you know they want to include people or or they're like well you're not you know you're not the right kind but usually it's about like cohesiveness and in, if the gene key says that this is the, the future human being, then I feel like we're in, b being invited to discover new ways of m getting our needs met through community. Whoa, that felt so right right there. That was amazing. So yeah, I love this too, Raven. I love this too. Yes, build each other up, support each other like get your needs met. You know, what do you need? I, I and literally ask yourself, like, what do you need? This moon is asking you, like, do you need like to connect with people? Do you need to, um, I feel like we're going to need more than we're going to feel like we need community more than ever right now. And holy shit, is that true? Right? Holy moly. I mean, everything that's going on, <laughs> We need community now more than ever. There's so much like separation and literally that separation that, that, that we feel so separate from each other. It's like, it's all an illusion. We're not, we just, we've been like conditioned to think that we are different. We've been conditioned by like society, you know, the media, like everything, movies, like everything. We've been conditioned that like, we are not um like that we that, that we're separate and that we can't combine that, that we have such different belief systems like there's so much separation you know and this is the opposite of that this is about working together so i love this i think this is really really um really beautiful i actually want to want to read the message let me go get my little wisdom book because i want to read the message for the 19th i feel like it's telling me to do it. I've been pulling so many cards uh, lately. Doing so many freaking readings. 
I'm just like slightly overwhelmed with all the stuff that's going on. But again, I feel like I have the energy to do it. So here's the here's what I'm going to leave you guys with. Right. All you need is love. I'm going to leave you guys with the message from the Wisdom Keepers Oracle uh, book for the 19th. The 19th goes from the shadow of codependence to the gift of sensitivity to the city of sacrifice. The gift of sensitivity is about being highly attuned to the needs of others. In order to sense others and their needs, you must first become independent from them. My gift to you. I am here to celebrate your sensitivity and all of the ways that you are attuned to the feelings and needs of the people in your life. Being of service is a wonderful thing. That said, when you offer your support, make sure that you are coming from a good place. Make sure you are happy with your own life and that you are not just trying to get your own needs met by meeting the needs of others. Oh, I can guarantee you people can smell hidden agendas. If you are isolating yourself because of hurt feelings, it's time to reach out for support Your heart is too big and beautiful to close off for too long. Ooh, I felt that one. (gasps) Dude. Oh my God. Okay, why does this keep coming up? I saw a meme that said, are you healing or are you just too isolated to be triggered? Like, are you healing or are you just so isolated that like not no one can trigger you? like a knife (laughs) damn yep (laughs) oh my god dawn you're hilarious so yeah right i feel that too it's hard it's hard i've been having weird dreams lately of like people that like i you know distant from yeah right raven (laughs) oh man that one hits hard (laughs) yeah i know but then i started thinking about it and then i was like i don't know about that i don't know if that i don't know how i feel about that (laughs) i was like wait a minute i started like trying to dissect it but then but then you know (laughs) all right exactly dawn you're building yourself up no i and i did think about it for a long time i was like hold on a second Hold on a second here. Because I literally live in the middle of nowhere and I spent like 24-7 alone with my dogs. I'm not even exaggerating, dude. So basically, I was like, huh. But you know what it is, is that like, I <laughs> here's me, here's my defense, okay? <laughs> my defense is that like, during this time alone, I can actually be me. I can actually be me with freedom and like with grace and like I feel safe, you know? And yes, I know that we only heal through relationships. Like I teach this in the Gene Keys, right? The Venus sequence. We can only heal through relationships and it's through those triggers, right? Where we become the EQ, the IQ and the SQ. We're talking about this right now in level two. And how those three spheres is like how you get emotionally defensive and mentally defensive. And you're like, "Mm, mm." and actually, I've been thinking about this a lot. And I'm like, well, this is me meeting my needs right now, right? If we're talking, let's bring it back to this full moon. This is me meeting my needs. I need space. (laughs) You know what I mean? But I feel like I get my fix of community through like our global community and the people that I like separated myself from actually wouldn't even be able to like really hold a conversation for very long with what I have to talk about. You know what I mean? Or what I like to talk about. I'm fucking crazy. You know, like my conversations are like out there out there and i and i have a very clear view of everything i mean i'm a projector and i'm stepping into the gift of that so powerfully lately that it's like 
I don't think people are ready. <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, I see the truth. and I cut through the bullshit. I have Mars and Saturn and Scorpio. I just cut through the bullshit. I'm not afraid to cut through the bullshit anymore. So this is, you know, it's kind of open ended. I'm not saying that like, I think both, both, you, you could see this both ways, you know. <laughs> Anyways, I feel like I'm blabbing now. Yep. Yep. Go ahead and logic it out. Why do you say that's so triggered? <laughs> oh my God. You guys, level three is very close. Who's going to sign up for level three? Oh my God. Maricela, you have to do level three. So it's coming up quicker than you think. I'm going to send an email to everybody who did level two last year, but didn't do level three and, and let you guys know it's coming up. Rebecca says, I've been having dreams about the death, change and transformation that needs to happen in my life. Even my subconscious is telling me to make endings. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this full moon and tomorrow we're going to celebrate it in the global community. So come join us over there. The celebrations are always, <laughs> are always, oh, I got a list, Maricela. I got my list. <laughs> I'm watching you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh yeah rebecca says moon goddess trading was is life changing right it's even for me dude every time and i'm almost ready to to uh put out like level two is almost ready the self-study course i'm so freaking excited to put it out it seems weird to put level two out before level one but i'm like you know what like whatever i'm just gonna do it <laughs> so we're gonna get level two before level one self-study course but I will be doing a I will be doing a live version like the live next year. And so you'll have all like you'll get access to all of the courses. So so I'm still going to do a live version. I'm not just going to do self-study. I need to do at least like level one once a year, level two once a year. And level three will always be in person um, either on Zoom or I'm also planning an in person in Sedona level three what do you guys think will that be freaking epic so all right i'm blabbing again <laughs> but anyways i hope you guys have an awesome full moon i don't even know what i was saying or if i finished the thought that i started but <laughs> tomorrow we have our celebration come join us in the global community and i hope you have an awesome full moon satnam i'll see you soon <laughs>